DxO has released Pure Raw 2 noise reduction software as well as sharpening and lens corrections. It's a great piece of software. There's a new Lightroom workflow, which I'm really excited about. I want to show that to you today. So stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I want to introduce you to DxO Pure Raw 2. You know, I'm a big fan of Topaz Denoise AI, and I own DxO Photolab 5, which has the deep prime noise reduction like Pure Raw 2 has. But this is a nice solution if you just want to batch process out a bunch of images or just work on one image at a time. And if you're a Lightroom and a Photoshop user, this new workflow will be great for you. It's going to really speed things up. And I really am excited to show it to you. And I didn't say that you can also use it as a standalone app. However, I feel why do that? That doesn't even make sense. And you'll see why here shortly when I show you this new workflow with Pure Raw 2. But let me go ahead and show you the standalone app. You can go ahead and add raw files by clicking the plus here, or you can drag and drop files onto this interface. And you can even download some sample raw files to try it out if you don't want to use your own, but I would recommend using your own. But I went ahead and downloaded the samples so I can show them to you. By the way, if you click on my affiliate link in the description below this video, there'll be a link for Pure Raw 2. It'll take you right to the page where you can download a free 30-day trial, which I recommend that you do just to see if it's right for you. Or if you want to purchase it, you can purchase it there. If you do purchase it, I make a small commission and it helps me to keep these YouTube tutorials coming your way. So I'd appreciate that. But I highly recommend downloading a free trial so you can try it out yourself and say, is this good or not? Do I need it? Don't I? Well, you know, but check it out. But let's look at the standalone. There's a plus here. I'm going to click this and my finder window opens up and I'm going to go ahead to downloads because like I said, I downloaded their free sample raw file. So let's open up this folder. I'm just going to select all these and say open. And then this DxO optics modules dialog opens up and it's telling me I don't have the optics modules for these particular cameras that are in this list here. And by the way, DxO now supports Fuji X-Tran, which is very great news for all of you Fuji owners out there. When it comes to lens optics and lens distortion, DxO has wrote the book on that. Now we just have to download the missing modules and they're selected by default. All you need to do is click on download selection and it will download those modules. And once they're done, save turns like this blue tone and just click on it and that saves those modules to your computer and you won't have to do it again. And now all we need to do is click process photos and then this dialog comes up. Now we do have some choices for the method HQ for high quality prime or D prime. I would say use D prime. It is the best. I'm telling you, it really works well. And then as far as optic corrections, make sure you have these both checked unless you don't want to use them for some particular reason. But I think it makes sense. And then your output format, JPEG or DNG. If you want to do raw files and you want to continue working with raw files, I would leave it with DNG. That's important. And it shows you uh, the size they start out with and what their new size will be after the um, deep prime goes on to them. Okay, so just in case you're interested in what size differences there will be. And then you have a choice for the destination folder, DXO folder, in the original image folder, that's what I recommend. They'll be easy to find, or you can put them in a custom folder, whatever you want. And then just click process and it processes them out. And you can see the process bar down here, processing one of four, about 50 seconds left right now. And once it's done processing, then you have some options here. You know, what do you want to do next? You want to go to the finder? Do you want to view the results or you want to export it to something? If you were to click on go to finder, and I've already opened my finder up just to show you, you're going to see there's those files, but check it out. They're in a special folder called DxO, which is in a subfolder inside the main folder. Uh, in my case, it's in the uh, downloads folder, but it's nice that they're separate for you. And there you can see them. Or if you want to view the results and see how great they came out, just click on view results. And now we can see the results. Now we have this split screen view here on the left would be the before on the right would be the after. And then you can drag this and see what kind of result you're getting, which man, this looks fantastic. Download these uh, sample images too. And then you have like different options before, after processing with a split view. You can 
you know, change the size, you know, two to one, we can go three to one, whatever you want to do. So you can really do some pixel peeping and see what kind of results you're getting. But from what I can see here, they look really exceptional. And then we have information down here. Like we can see that this, this image was shot at ISO 2500 and it looks really good. I'll be doing some images at ISO 25,600 when I get to Lightroom. So stay tuned for that. I'll go back to one to one. Now let's click through some of these different images. It takes a second or two for them to process. And then we could move the slider and take a look at the results. So as you can see, we're getting really good results. And let's check some stars out here. You know, this is a true test for a piece of noise editing software. But look at the results we get with the stars. Pretty nice. And here's the last image here. But as I said, I probably would not work from the standalone app because to me, it doesn't make much sense. I think either Lightroom or working from the Finder makes the most sense, which is pretty exciting to me. Now, at this point, you could just close out uh, Pure Raw because they're already saved out wherever you told them to be saved to. Next up, what I want to show you is the Finder method for processing your raw files. These are those sample DXO images. And as you recall, in the standalone, we process these images out and I have this subfolder called DXO. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this subfolder. And let me show you how you work with this method. Now, this is a really good method if you like batch processing a bunch of images out at a time and then maybe coming back later and working on them. So what you do here is you can select all of these images or just some, whichever you want. In my case, I'm just going to do a uh, command A and select all and then just right click on any one of the images and down at the bottom. Now, this is for Max. You'll have these quick actions show up. Uh, you can uh, process as uh, DNG using HQ prime or D prime. I would use D prime. But before I do that, let me just say one thing. One thing you need to do is enable DxO Pure Raw 2 to give you those quick actions. And to do that, what you need to do is come to your preferences, system preferences, and you're going to want to go into extensions. And you want to make sure that you have uh, DxO Pure Raw 2 checked on here for finder extensions okay because if you don't do that when you right click here you're not going to see this here now you have different options okay you can send it as a dng you can process to jpeg using any one of these noise reduction methods or you could use uh, process to dng and jpeg using this or process with standalone settings in my case this is the one i would always use and and i would never use hq or prime i would always use d prime because hey it is the best, so why not use the best? Now, as far as a PC is concerned, I'm sure the process would be very similar, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't own a PC. But before I do that, let's delete this DxO folder that we previously processed the uh, images with the standalone app. But all we need to do at this point is right click again and come down here and I'm going to click on because I'm going to do a DNG. I'm going to come to deep prime. And when I do that, I'm going to get a dialogue box up. You'll see here in a sec. In my case, I'm trying a demo and I recommend that you try that yourself. It says I have 31 days left and it's a full working uh, demo with no limitations. Click on try demo. And now you'll see my images are processing out or my one because I didn't select all. Okay, not a big deal. I forgot to select all. I'll come back and do that. I'll just grab these three and let's do it again. Let's right click because I have one already in there. I won't do it again and I'll come to Deep Prime HQ and that dialog will come back up again. And this time I'll click Try Demo again. And now it's going to do three images and it says about 39 seconds remaining. I'll just cut this off here and I'll be right back with you. And I'm back. Let's go ahead and open up this DxO folder. And here are my files inside of here. Now let me change the view to a list so we can see here. Here's all our files. And you notice they have Deep Prime added onto the file names, which is really nice. And they're in their own folder called DxO. Uh, what is it? DxO. That's the folder. And you can see your file size is here. And just like that, we're done. Then we can go ahead and process them with whatever editing software we want. And next up, I'm going to show you a Lightroom workflow. Okay, so here I am in Lightroom and I want to show you that workflow. Now I have this folder of a bunch of really high ISO images starting at ISO 12,800 and then also some 
25,600, so super high ISOs. And also, I want to show you how we can just either process one image or all the images or just whatever images that we want. And this is a really great workflow. Let me show you how it's done. These images are for test purposes only. They're all just quick snapshots. But let me just show you, this is a box. My wife had some shoes and I just took a picture of this box. So let me zoom in and you can see this is ISO 25,600. Like it is incredibly noisy. I mean, it's horrible, right? And then I have some of uh, some movies I have here, some DVDs that I took, uh, 25,600 super high ISO. And then I have some others that I took at, a, well, that's 25,600, some flowers. And I have a few in here at 12,800 ISO. So we're going to run a test on these. And I'll show you how this workflow works, which I really like. And again, you can select one file, two, three files, however many files you want, or you can select them all. I'm going to do a command or a control A, and that will select all the files. And then just right click on any of the files, go to export, and then find process with DXO Pure All 2. Click on that. And then when you do another dialog box will come up. If you just purchase Pure Raw 2, go ahead and enter your activation code and click on activate. And if you're trying to demo, click on try demo. And then this new dialog opens up. And now all you need to do is pick your method. I always like deep prime and then you have your optical corrections, global lens sharpening and lens distortion correction. I usually check those both on. And then we have some more choices, output format. You could do JPEG or DNG. I want to work with RAW, so I'm going to use DNG. And then we have a destination folder. I recommend that you go back to the same folder, all right? Or you could choose your own folder, whatever you would like in your workflow. And then just click on Process. And then it lets us know it's going to take about two minutes to process out all the images. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll get right back with you. But isn't this a quick and easy workflow? Now, all you have to do is wait out those two minutes when it's finally finished. And the way you'll know is it takes you into your collections and it made itself its own DXO Pure Raw 2 folder. It does this for you in the background and it placed it in this subfolder here. And you see there's 13 images and here they are in my timeline. Now you can view them from here or here's what I like to do. Right click on one of the images and then go to to go to folder and library and you'll notice there they are in this DXO folder in the same original folder it's a subfolder I should say inside of the original folder and if I click on the original folder you'll see all my images and you'll see the first image will be a DXO image followed by the original DNG file the second image will be another DXO deep prime image and its counterpart in the original DNG. And I like it this way because I like to do some uh, comparisons and some pixel peeping, which we'll do. Let's go on this first image first. I'll go ahead and select both of these images. I'll command click on the second one. They're both selected. I'm gonna go into the comparison mode and uh, let's do some pixel peeping. So as you can clearly see the image on the right, now I'm zoomed into 300% is the original DNG. The image on the left is the deep prime noise reduction, but look at that. But let's examine it. But even here, how does it know that this information is here? I don't know, but it looks really great. So not only does it denoise, but it sharpens. You can see a slight amount of noise up here. It's not bad at all. But let's go through here and really see. Because over at the left side here, it was horrible. There was some horrible noise. Uh, let's just keep going. Okay, over here. See all this noise? This is horrible. But look how it's cleaned it up. You can still see some noise in here. It's not perfect, but it's doing a really good job. You know, I think I would have to say that um, Denoise AI on a really high ISO image like this probably does a little bit better. And plus, it's a little less money. But however, as far as this type of workflow, it doesn't even compare to DxO Pure Raw. So if you're looking for a great workflow, this is the way to go. Topaz Denoise AI does support raw editing. However, for me, it doesn't work because I like to use linear profiles in Lightroom. And when I process my images in Denoise AI as raw files, I don't have any of my matching camera profiles, nor do I have my linear profile. So that's a problem for me. So what I have to do is I do some basic edits in uh, Lightroom 
And then when I take my image into Photoshop, the first thing I do is run Denoise AI on it. And it does a great job for me. And like I said, it does work better on super high ISO images. On regular ISO images, they're both pretty comparable. However, I will say this, Pure Raw 2 is a little more expensive. It's $129 versus $79.99 for Topaz. But the workflow is really fantastic with uh, Pure Raw. And it's a great piece of software. And you'll be able to use all your camera profiles and linear profiles. Here's another image. Let me go ahead and zoom in some DVD cases. Now I'm zoomed into 300%, but the image on the right, as you can clearly see, has a lot of noise, but look how it's cleaned up the image on the left. It's done a fantastic job. Let's look at one more image. The ISO for this image is 12,800. A little lower, but a horribly high ISO. So let's go ahead and zoom in. The image on the left is the DXO D prime. The image on the right is the original. And I believe I'm zoomed into 300%. Yeah, 300%. So let's move this around and see. But it's sharpened this image up on the left nicely and eliminated the noise. So it does a fantastic job. This artificial intelligence today is incredible. We can shoot at super high ISOs and get great results. Well, there you have it, everyone. That was a first look at DxO Pure Raw 2. I'm really excited about it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Now, the difference between this and uh, Denoise is this does optical corrections as well as sharpening and noise reduction, where Denoise AI just does noise reduction and sharpening. It doesn't do the optical corrections. So that's a plus here. If you enjoyed this uh, tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.